Welcome to English for All. Today, I'm gonna explain the poem Full Fathom 5, Thy Father Lies by William Shakespeare. This is also called a song as it is presented uh, in the drama written by William Shakespeare called The Tempest. Uh, it was kept in Act 1, Scene 2. In this poem, uh, this one of the characters, the spirit Ariel sings this song, Full Fathom Five, Thy Father Lies, uh, to Ferdinand. Ferdinand, one of the, he, he, Ferdinand was the prince of Naples. Uh, spirit Ariel, the spirit Ariel thinks that Ferdinand's father is drowned. Drawn means dubeko. Uh, so uh, he sings this song to Ferdinand's uh, in the form of sympathy. Um, so here I'm going to uh, do some explanations or uh, line by line explanations of this poem. Uh, let's go through this. Uh, before uh, we go through this poem, we need to know something about the figure of speech or uh, the different things like assonance, alliteration, and onomatopoeia. So after we discuss this, after I tell you something about the poem, the lines here, uh, I'll tell you the things about assonance, alliteration, and onomatopoeia. First, let's go to the poem. The first line, full fathom five, thy father lies. Full fathom, full means complete. Fathom means this is the measurement of six feet referring to the depth of water. So fathom, it, it means six feet, right? Six feet, uh, depth, it refers to de depth. So full fathom five. Fathom five means six feet into five means 30 feet. So full fathom, full 30 feet, thy father lies means thy means your it is in world english so in world english thy means yours so full fathom five your father lies means your father lies 30 feet below so below water so it's uh, the depth of basically water so the uh, spirit ariel is saying that your father foreigner's father lies 30 feet below water right so he's drawn 30 feet below water of his bones are coral made of his bones are coral made means his bones after he is drawn after he's drawn into the water his bones are coral made means his bones are changed into corals so coral is uh, something that is most valuable thing like jewelries or most expensive things so uh, the spirit ariel says that Though your father is drawn into the water, his bones are not decayed. Um, so rather his bones are changed into corals, something expensive, something valuable thing. The third line, those are poles that wear his eyes. Now those are poles, poles are just like diamonds, okay, in Moti also we say in Nepali. Those are poles that wear his eyes. The early J Moti Chan it means your the eyes of your father um, have, have been changed into poles right and similarly the fourth line says nothing nothing of him that doth fade means nothing of your father none of the body parts of your fathers have been have been decayed right nothing of your father not a bone not a single body part of your father um, has been decayed. Timber Buaku could even body parts or say big rego china, sorry golego china, rather both but doth suffer a sea change, but all the body parts they suffer a sea change. Sea change means here a transformation or uh, undergo a transformation. So here the spirit Ariel is convincing or persuading or expressing its sympathy towards Ferdinand. Ferdinand ko bua ko death bhai ko athwa Ferdinand ko bua chai tya 30 feet below water pani mani 30 feet tala chai dube ko bhanne kura chai spirit area lai lagi rahe so so he's just convincing or he's soothing ke ulai chai convince garera phakai raheko cha uslai chai santwana di raheko cha nothing of him doth that 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 doth fade kunai pani body parts haru dikke bhayeko chaina but doth suffer a change sabai body parts haru all the body parts they have undergone a change okay they have been changed into something valuable and something expensive 
uh, into something uh, rich and strange, into something rich and strange. Kune, chai, expensive kurar ma change by kusa, mongo kurar ma change by kusa. That is uh, how the spirit aerial convinces or uh, suthes uh, another character, the Ferdinand, uh, in the act. So after the death of your father, after the death of your father, she names hourly ring his nail. In she names here uh, are those heavenly bodies uh, which are supposed to inhabit uh, inhabit uh, in the sea. So agarini metu vaira death vaira so sea ma gaira basi raiko heavenly bodies or like she names bani. So she names hourly ring his nail. Those people who are in this, those uh, people who are already in the sea um, after their death, they are ringing his nail. Means very nail here means a type of bell that is rang um, basically in the funeral procession. Okay, mithu sanskar ko bela se bazaar ne khal ko bhanti lai chahiye. We say that nail. So sea names. There are some people in the sea. There are some people who are welcoming your father by ringing a bell right so it means your father though your father is dead is, you see his, his death is meaningful so his, his spirit ariel is saying that ding dong so can you listen this so they're singing sea nymphs are singing ding dong this is the sound of bell that sea nymphs are uh, ringing for your for welcoming your father hark hark means listen hark listen now i hear them Oh, I can I can hear the sound ding dong bell. So I can hear the sound ding dong bell, which is sang by sea nymphs for welcoming your father in the heaven, right? So though your father died, your father is in the heaven. So this is the explanation of the poem, um, Full Fathom Five. Thy father lies in this poem. The spirit Ariel says that says to uh, Ferdinand that though your father is dead. His body parts are not decayed. His body parts have gone uh, on, which ha have been changed, and they have been changed into something rich and strange, something rich and strange like uh, corals and pearls. So, and next thing is that there are sea nymphs, there are heavenly bodies in the sea who are welcoming your father by ringing um, bells. There, they ring. Um, a bell to your father to welcome your father ding dong so this is how <coughs> i'm sorry um spirit ariel convinces or expresses his sympathy in the death of ferdinand's father now here i have the uh, explanations or uh, there are here are some key points So, uh, it's a beautiful song taken from William Shakespeare's play, The Tempest, I told you. Uh, thus, William Shakespeare, through the song of his spirit, it talks about immortality of life. He means to say that life doesn't die but changes to another form. So, the death of Ferdinand's father is meaningful. Death is nothing but just a medium of changing life from one form to another. So, uh, just like ice being changed into corals. Uh, sorry, pearls and bones being changed into corals. So, uh, this full fathom five, thy father lies uh, in a great tubal heritage abode. Uh, it's kept under ecology and change. So, here we need to uh, relate it. How are the human lives, even after their, their death, they contribute to the ecological balance or eco ecological system? So, in this poem, death is shown as meaningful change, right? So, as, the, as everybody parts have been changed into meaningful things death is not an absolute in but only a process of transformation into another natural object and the main idea is the man who is a part of nature transform into another other natural objects after death so uh, here the body parts are changed into something valuable and expensive thing and they are still they are the part of the environment even after death uh Ferdinand's father is warmly welcomed in heaven by nymphs by ringing the bell right so this is how the poet uh, William Shakespeare wants to present that death is meaningful and death is meaningful in such a way that it
can be the part of ecosystem or it can be the part of our biosphere or environment even after death so there we can talk about our life and art how art is still immortal uh, like the uh, the body part or it it can it com it helps to the environment so in this poem the the poet has used so many figure of his speech uh, in the uh, very beginning of the poem i told you something about uh, i just uh, showed you alliteration assonance and anamotopoeia so anamotopoeia uh, that is the natural sounds of something like ding dong ting tong um, tang tung these are anamotopoeic sound so in this uh, poem and there is ding dong right so to talk about the sound of bell the poet has used ding dong so this is onomatopoeia this is a figure of speech and next is alliteration alliteration uh, this is the uh, repetition of uh, consonant sounds basically in the initial or uh, in the beginning of the sentence so the poet repeats the the consonant sounds four sounds full fathom five thy father lies so fa 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 in full fa in fathom so this is what you call alliteration this is the repetition of consonant sounds and assonance the repetition of vowel sounds in stressed syllables like five and lights or names and rings are the examples of assonance so five five a sounds and lights also are lies lies a sounds so five a sound of five and um a sound of lies Uh, so they are the examples of assonance and nims e sound of nims and rings e sound of ring so these are the examples of assonance so here uh, the poet has used three figure of speech uh, alliteration assonance and onomatopoeia uh, uh, to uh, make the poem beautiful or uh, to give the complete meaning of this poem so i hope you got some ideas about the poem or about the song full fathom 5 thy father lies thank you so much for watching this video please don't forget to subscribe the channel for more updates um i hope you, re you really enjoy this if you have any queries about lamentation sorry uh, full fathom 5 thy father lies you can uh, comment below or you can ask some questions if you have some questions um so in this way you can practice this or this can be uh really helpful for you while uh writing in exam or while you have to uh, make the summary of this